Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for City Builder Ancient World. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full three-player game today. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason I'm showing this game is because it won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of the channel. If you enjoy content like this and you'd like to directly support the channel, then you can learn more about this by going to patreon.com slash Games, and there are a bunch of perks that come along with this, including voting on some videos that are made each month like this one, as well as watching those videos early and advertisement free. Now, the last thing I'd like to ask is that if you like this video in particular, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button. And if you have any thoughts about the game as it's being played, if you see anything particularly interesting or a move that I just should have done differently, then please comment down below and let me know what you think. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I am showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. The other thing to mention is the fact that these colored cubes do not come with the game. I am simply using them to better differentiate between the players for this video. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of this game. Now, it is a tile laying game that can be played competitively or cooperatively, and in today's video, I'm just focusing on the competitive play. Now, on a player's turn, they're going to choose one of the tiles that they have in their hand, and they are going to add it into their growing tile laying area. These tiles have various roads on them, and as you place these down, you're going to create completed districts depending on where those roads are. For example, once you have a couple of tiles like that, you then have a completed district because there are roads going all the way around it. And after completing a district, in the future, you can take one of these monuments and place it on that exact spot, as long as the shape exactly matches that two by one, and as long as the colored landmarks within that district match up the required landmarks on the monument. These monuments give victory points at the end of the game, depending on a variety of conditions that are printed on them. And instead of putting these monuments down, we can place settlements into our districts. Now you can only access the settlements that are closest to you, and each player has one of these tiles between them and one of the other players. So that means right now we could place blue, green, or red settlements down, choosing from any one of these spots, but we would have to meet the requirements for those settlements in the district that was just completed. Now I'll talk about those requirements in more detail later, and it's worth noting that these districts don't have to be this exact shape. Depending on how you place these tiles, the districts can be either somewhat larger like this or significantly larger as you expand them out in your city. Now at the end of each player's turn, they are going to draw new tiles to fill up their hand until they have three, and then we are going to keep playing the game until every tile has been played from this supply as well as from in front of the players. After that, we will gain victory points for the monuments that we built in our city, as well as for all of the victory points showing underneath the settlers that we have placed out into our city, and the player who has the most victory points will be the winner. Now again, I will go through the details of how all of this works while we are playing the game, and I think now is a good time to start. And for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the pink player down here. Now we have this token, which means we are the active player, so we can now take the first turn of the game. Now each player's turn is split into two steps. The first is expansion and the second one is upkeep. During the expansion step, we must take one of the three tiles that are currently in our hand and place those out into our city. It's worth noting that these tiles are hidden from our opponents, but since we're playing as the pink player, I'll leave these face up. Now, I think we are going to place this tile, and whenever you place a new tile, you have to put it so that the edge of the new tile meets up with the edge of any previous tile, including this starting tile here. So that means we could place this like this, or we could place it around any of these six spots, and of course we can rotate this, and I think we want to place it just like that. This means we have started to extend out a district, and a district is a fully enclosed area with roads all the way around it. So at the moment, we don't have any completed districts, but this district could be completed by putting something like that on our next turn, and we'll just have to see what we actually want to do on our next turn. Now, after we've done our mandatory tile placement, we then have the option of adding a monument or settlers into completed districts, but currently we don't have any completed districts, so we'll talk about that in more detail later. This means we can now move into the upkeep step of our turn. And the first thing we can do in this step is discard any tiles we want from our hand. At this point, we will always have two, so we can discard zero, one, or two of these. And any that we discard will go to the back of this stack. And then we draw tiles from the front of the stack until we have three tiles total. For the moment, I don't think we have a problem with these two tiles, though. So we are not going to discard any, and we simply draw until we have three tiles. So we can draw one tile and put that into our hand. And now we can continue with upkeep. And the next thing that we do is check to see if there are three monuments out here. 
If there are less than three, then we draw new ones from the bag until we have three face up. Obviously, there are three out here, so we don't have to draw anymore, which means our upkeep step is done, and play can now move clockwise to the next player. So that is going to be the black player, and I think from this point on, we're not going to bother using this tile. We'll be able to tell whose turn it is as we cycle around, but of course, you can use this active player token if you want when you play the game. So the black player has to start by expanding, and they've decided to place this tile like that. They don't have any completed districts, so they can move into upkeep. They are not going to discard any tiles, so they'll simply draw a third one, and that has finished their turn. This means the white player can go. And they've decided to expand by placing this tile right there. That's finished their expansion because they don't have any complete districts, and they are going to simply draw one tile, and now it's time for us to go again. So we can place one tile down, and I think we want to place this tile just like that. By doing that, we have completed a district because as you can see, we have an area that is completely surrounded by roads. After placing a tile, we now have the option of putting monuments into completed districts as well as settlers into completed districts. And let's start by talking about the monuments. Now, all monuments have this shape, which is essentially a one by two. And in order to place a monument into a district, the district has to be exactly that shape. If it was any larger or a different angle, then the monument would not fit. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is there is a landmark requirement for each of these monuments. This Imperial Gardens says there must be a green and orange landmark in that district. This Temple of Venus wants orange as well as blue. And then this Triumphal Arc wants it green as well as red. In this case, when we look at the district that we just created, we have orange and we have green, which does match up with the requirements for Imperial Gardens. And it is the correct size for the Imperial Gardens. So I think we are going to place this monument down. Now, by doing that, we've actually covered up that district, and there was a white house there where settlers can go, but because we placed a monument down, it covered that up, and we cannot settle into that district. So it's important to note that you can only settle in a district or put a monument. You can never do both. Now, I'll talk about the details of putting settlers down rather soon, I think. And in this case, we have now completed constructing our monument in that district. Now, what this means is at the end of the game, we will score victory points depending on the description of this monument. When we focus in, the Imperial Gardens says we are going to gain two victory points at the end of the game for its longest continuous straight line. Currently, we have two streets that are tied for being the longest. That is this one here and that one there. And each of those is two tiles long. So right now, this is worth four victory points to us. And now we are incentivized to create one very long street by the end of the game. Because, of course, every tile in that very long straight street will be worth two victory points to us. So we can keep this in mind as we continue to expand out as we play the game. And now it looks like it's time for us to go into upkeep. Now, again, we could discard any tiles that we wanted to, but at the moment, I think these tiles are just fine. Sometimes when we get later on in the game and we're looking for a specific type of landmark to place down to pick up a monument or settlers, we might discard tiles to increase our chances of drawing into that landmark. But for now, I think we are pretty flexible and open. So let's keep these two tiles and then draw a third one. And you'll notice there are just two monuments in the supply over here. So during this upkeep phase, we now need to draw a random new one from this tile. So it looks like the new one is going to be the public baths. Let's focus in and take a look at all three of these monuments because we haven't looked at the specifics of the other ones. Starting with the Temple of Venus, that says that if you put this in your city, at the end of the game, you will get two victory points per populated district in your city with no empty houses. Once again, I'll talk about populating districts as well as empty houses very soon. The next one is the Triumphal Arc, which is worth one point per tile in your city's largest populated district. And finally, the Public Baths say you gain two victory points per settler in any one of your districts. So all three of these have to do with settlers. And again, I will be discussing settling our cities very soon. Well, our turn is done, so the black player can go. And they have decided to expand just like this. Now, as you can see, they have completed a district. This is the same size of district that we completed, but again, you can create larger districts than this in your city as you continue on through the game. After placing the tile, they have the option of putting a monument here, or they could settle into that spot. As you can see, if they want to put a monument, they currently have green and red landmarks, and that does match up with the Triumphal Arch, but they also have two of these white open houses, and they've decided they would like to settle into this district instead of placing a monument down. Now, the way settling works is the active player can settle any of the settler tokens that are currently closest to them on either of the two settler tiles that are between them and their adjacent opponents. 
Each of these settler tiles has three different columns on it. So what that means is the black player can choose from any of these six different settler options. Now, in order to settle into a district, there must be open houses, and each of these open houses, which have the white roofs on them, can take one settler. It's also worth noting that each completed district can have only one settler of each of the five different colors. Now you may have noticed that there are actually two different sizes of settlers. We have the small ones on the outside tracks, and then there are large settlers that go down the middle of these tiles. Now the way we put these settlers down involves those landmarks. We know the monuments need the landmarks, and so do the settlers. We have this handy cheat sheet right here, which explains in order to settle a small settlement, you have to have one landmark of the matching color, and then another landmark that is a different color. So in order to settle this green small settler, there must be a green landmark and a non-green landmark in that area. Now over here for the larger ones, it's similar, but you need two of the matching color plus another one that is different. And that is the case for all but the purple settlers. The purple settlers are different. The small one requires three different landmarks in that district. And the large purple one requires one of each of the four landmark colors in that district. Now, as you can see, the purple settlers exist always exactly in the middle of these tiles, whereas the rest of these were placed randomly during setup. And again, you can only access the settlers that are closest to you. Now, in this case, the black player has two open houses, so they can settle up to twice into that district, and they have a red landmark as well as a green landmark. With that in mind, they have decided to settle this red settler into one of those two houses because they have the red landmark which they need, and they have a non-red landmark in the form of this green landmark here. Now, they do have one other open house, and again, they cannot place any more red settlers into this district because you can never have two of the same color. Now, they do have a green landmark, which is required to place a green settler, and now they have access to two of those. They could place this small one here or that small one there. But of course, they cannot place this large green settler because that requires two of the green landmark and one other. And there's only one green landmark currently in that district. So as I said, they could settle either of these. And as you can see, there are numbers underneath them. At the end of the game, all of these numbers will be worth victory points. So because of that, the black player has decided they want to settle this green settler. You'll notice that they were only able to settle this one once the one before it was settled into their city. So they are going to settle this green token. And as you can see, that just generated three victory points for them at the end of the game. Obviously, if they had settled this one, they would have generated just two. And three is a bigger number, so they decided to go for that. So they can place this green settler right over there. And now they've filled up all of their vacant houses in that district. Now, it's important to note that you can settle as well as add monuments into districts that were closed earlier in the game. For example, they could have not settled this green and then in the future settled a green over there. Now, of course, in this case, there's no reason for them not to do this right now. But if they had been set up to place a settler down of a color they did not currently have access to, they could get access to that new settler by settling into other districts later and then settling the correct color into a previous district once it is available. Now, there is one other important restriction to know about settling, and that is that you are never allowed to settle the final token from any of these columns. What that means is if while we are playing the game, this orange settler gets placed over there, and so does that purple, and then we place this green and this blue, well, that red can never be settled for the rest of the game. So this is going to lock in the victory points that each player is going to get from that one specific column. And obviously, the sooner you are able to settle throughout that column, the more likely you are to make it so that final token is closer to your opponent, which means you were able to get more points from that column than they were. So each player effectively has six different competitions that they are waging between their two adjacent opponents. Now at this point, the black player is done with their settling and they can move on to upkeep. They're simply going to draw the top tile here and then they don't have to draw any more monuments. So they're done and the white player can go. And after considering their options, they're gonna place their tile like that. This is going to also complete a district, just like we've seen every other player do. And this has two vacant houses in it. And we also have a new symbol that shows up on this tile. As you can see, that is a statue, and this counts as a wild landmark. So when you are settling or building a monument in that district, you decide what color of landmark that statue will be. It's worth noting that statue must stay that color for the rest of the game for the purposes of placing settlers and building monuments. 
Now the white player does want to settle over here, and because they have a blue and a red monument in this area, they have the ability to place a blue as well as a red small settler, because of course each of these landmarks matches one of those colors and is also different for the other settler that's being placed. With that in mind, they've decided to settle this red settler there, and then this blue one that was farther down that same column. Well, that's going to finish up the white player's turn, and they're simply going to draw one tile. White is done, so now we get to take our turn. Now, our city is certainly growing at this point, and we have some interesting options available to us. We could place something like this down there, which would be setting ourselves up for a district that has a ridiculous number of settlers in it. That would have one, two, three, four, five of these open buildings. And honestly, that's probably too much, considering you can only place one settler of each type into a district. We could, of course, flip this over, and that is making a large district with one, two, three of these open spots. And we'd be more likely to make that work out, although we would, of course, want to get other landmark types in there to actually be able to place those settlers down. Now, another thing to keep in mind is we have the Imperial Gardens Monument, so we are incentivized to try and make at least one really long street. So we could place this down there, which would make this our longest street and be worth an extra two points to us. And we'd be setting ourselves up with a couple of these vacant houses, along with an orange landmark, to then try to continue down. Unfortunately, at the moment, though, we don't have any orange settlers that are next up, although we could potentially put a blue or a red landmark down over here in the future to then place the blue down to then get access to the orange to place that over there as well. I think that's going to be probably good enough for us. We're going to mainly do this to extend out that street, and as we continue to play through the game, it's likely this is going to become our dominant street as we continue to try and get points from this Imperial Gardens tile. After placing, we have upkeep, and I think we certainly want to keep this tile, and that one has a statue, which is a wild landmark, and I think we want to keep that. So let's not discard either, and we can simply draw a new tile, and now our turn is done. So the black player can go, and they've decided to place this tile like that, so they are extending out a larger district that has one vacant house, as well as an orange and red landmark in it. That's finished their expansion, and for upkeep, they'll simply take one tile, and now the white player can go. They have to start by placing a tile, and they are going to place this one over here. That has completed a district, and now they have the option of building a monument or settling there. And they are going to build the Temple of Venus Monument. As you can see, that requires an orange as well as blue landmark, and they have the orange and the blue there. And the district is exactly this shape, so it will fit just like that. When we focus in, the Temple of Venus says they are going to gain two victory points per populated district in their city that has no empty houses. And as you can see, they do have a populated district because that's defined as having at least one settler in that district. In addition to that, there are no vacancies in this district. So that means right now, this Temple of Venus is getting them two victory points and they are incentivized to not only continue to settle as they continue throughout the game, but to also make sure they don't have too many of these white houses in those districts so that none of them are vacant once the game is over so that they can get those extra two points. They can now perform upkeep and they will simply draw a tile and then we do need another monument from the bag. In this case, that is going to be the Grand Arena. As you can see, that is worth four victory points, and you gain an extra four victory points if your city has the most settlers compared to all of the other players. So it looks like we continue to have all of these monuments be focused on the settlers. All right, it's our turn again, and I think let's do our first settlement. And when we do this, we can also help ourselves out with trying to build out this road. Let's place this over here, and as you can see, that did not add to our longest road, but it now makes it possible to put a tile on this spot, which will extend our road out. We've also completed this district here, and as you can see, it has two empty houses. We also have an orange landmark and a blue landmark, so let's settle this blue settler right here, and that has gained us access to that orange settler. Once again, each of these requires a landmark of their matching color, plus one other landmark that is not their color, and you are allowed to share landmarks when you're placing these down. So far in this game, no one has placed any of these larger settlers, although as we start to build larger districts, I do think that's going to happen, because as you can see, there are less of these larger settlers, and they are worth more victory points when you place them down. Well, we are done expanding, and I think we're currently okay with the tiles that we have, so let's just draw a new one from the supply, and that's finished our turn. All right, the black player is up, and they've decided to place this tile just like that. That's finished their expansion, and now for upkeep, they simply draw a tile, and now white can go. 
So they have to start by expanding, and they're going to place this tile like that. So they have extended two of their districts, but they have not actually closed any in. After that, they're simply going to finish their turn by drawing a tile. This means we can go, and I think let's place this tile just like that. In this way, we are starting to build out a bigger district, and we have two of the green landmarks, which means we are working towards being able to place this large settler here. Of course, it needs two green landmarks and one other landmark of a different color, and we should have the ability to place one of those into this spot in the future. Although right now, when we look at our two tiles, we have a couple of greens and then this blue, and that's actually kind of it. Uh, it would be great to put a tile down that's like this to extend out to maybe an even bigger district to fill in even more of these houses. So I think maybe we can get rid of this one and keep that one. In a worst case scenario, we could place it like this and just place a green settler there. And by getting rid of this, we could potentially find an even better tile for us. So we're going to put this to the back of the deck and then draw two tiles. Oh, wow. This one does not actually have any roads on it at all. It has an orange as well as two of the vacant houses. So you can build a rather large district with something like this. And of course, it's going to be harder to actually fully enclose it. The other tile that we got, oh, also has an interesting orientation. It has roads going like this. So that means all three of these are connected. So again, this could create an even bigger district in our area. So the black player is up. And they are going to expand like this. That has completed a rather large district over here. It has two vacant houses. It also has two orange landmarks and a red landmark. With that in mind, they are going to settle this large settler because they have the two orange it needs plus one non-orange. And then they can also settle with this small red token because they have a red landmark and a non-red landmark. So they'll place this right over there. And that just got them three endgame victory points. After that, they will end their turn by simply drawing one tile. Next up, the white player can go. And they've decided to place a tile just like that. After that, they will simply draw a tile for their upkeep, and now their turn is done. So we can now take our turn, and my original idea was to place something right over here. We could, of course, place this like that. In this case, we would have two green and one non-green, so we can place a large settler down, which is a fine thing, I guess, but we are having a pretty large district for just one settler going down. Uh, we could also do something like that, but then we have one, two, three, four vacant houses, and it's obviously preferable to fill in as many of these as we can, and that does seem like it's maybe biting off more than we can chew. It's not the end of the world if any of these are vacant at the end of the game, but of course we are trying to fill these as much as we can. Now we do have these other tiles over here. We could go crazy and place this here. That would get us one, two, three, four, five vacant uh, buildings, which is probably a bad idea. And that would open up this district to be even larger. Now we could also just hold off on this spot and wait until we get another tile that maybe is better. And we could place any of these into other spots. For example, we could do something like this. That way we've extended out this district. We've also added a couple of vacant houses there. And we have a red and two orange. Currently, the closest large orange settler is over there, though. And as you can see, we have to settle this blue settler before we get access to the orange. We could also do something like this, where we just go for the red and the orange to try and settle into this column over here. Although we would, of course, need more of the vacant houses, but we have ways to do that. And we would, of course, draw more tiles. So we have quite a few decent options. And another thing to keep in mind, of course, is the Imperial Gardens as we try to make a long road over here. With that in mind, I think for this turn, let's actually just place our tile like that to open up the possibility of placing something over there and possibly completing a district. We are keeping this in our hand, which we could use to complete that to place out that green settler if we want to in the future. Um, now, the big question is, after placing this, do we want to keep either of these? I think keeping that one is good, but this one is just not doing a lot for us right now. Of course, it could expand into a very large district to place a bunch of settlers down, but I'm not sure if we are well positioned for that in the moment. So I think let's discard this tile, and then we can draw two more. All right, it's time for the black player to go. After considering their options, they are going to place this tile with no roads on it at all right over there. So they are looking to build out a rather large sized district, and there are currently three vacant houses there, so it's likely they're hoping to fill all three of those, if not more, as they continue to expand this district. 
They are going to need at least two other tiles to close this in. I'm curious to see just how large this district ends up being. Well, that's finished their expansion, and they are going to keep these two tiles and to draw one more to finish their turn. All right, the white player can go, and they will start by expanding. And they've decided to place this tile just like that. This district is not closed in, and it currently has a red landmark, two blue landmarks, as well as the statue, which can act as any one color when this is settled. After that, they are going to discard one tile from their hand to the bottom of the stack, and then they'll draw two more to finish their turn. All right, it's now time for us to take our seventh turn of the game, but before we do that, I'd now like to talk about how the game ends and how we actually win. Now, in this main stack of tiles, at the beginning of the game, we put 15 per player, so that means in this three-player game, there were 45 tiles, and if it was a four-player game, there would be 60 tiles total here. Now, in addition to those tiles, each player did start with three tiles in front of them, and we are going to keep playing the game until every tile has been placed into each player's city. What this means is each player will always take 18 turns in the game because there are 15 tiles in here per player and each player starts with these three. Now we're starting our seventh turn of the game, so we've just crossed into the second third of the game. And it's worth noting that as we get close to the end of the game, this draw stack will actually deplete. Once there are no more tiles here, players cannot discard tiles to draw new ones, but we will keep playing until every tile in front of each player has been placed out into our cities. Once each player has taken 18 turns, the game will be over and we can count up our victory points. That's pretty simple. We just add up all of the numbers showing up on our side of our settlement rows, and then we add to that any victory points the monuments that we've built give us, and then whoever has the most points once they add all that together will be the winner. So we have a decent amount of the game to go, and now let's take our turn. When we focus down, I've just noticed something, and that is that two out of these three different monuments need green as well as red landmarks. Up here, we have almost built a district that could exactly fit this shape, and it does have a green, but of course we would need a red landmark to make that happen, and we don't have any red in our hand, and we also don't have any statues. I do think we should keep that in mind, though, and leave this open to hope to put a red landmark there to complete this and take one of these two to get more victory points at the end of the game. Honestly, I think what we should probably do at this point is just place this tile over there. By doing that, we complete this region, and we are able to place one of these large settlers down, and we've then also added an orange settler to a new district, and that district has a couple of vacant houses and could potentially be combined with this district that has that green landmark. Uh, right now, green into orange is not actually something that's going to work out super well for us, but we could complete this and do one and then do the other one later on if we need to as we continue through these settlers. I do think for the moment this is going to be our best option. And now that this district is closed, I figure we may as well settle it. We have two green landmarks and a non-green landmark, so that means we can settle with this large settler here. So that's going to get us two victory points at the end of the game, and we can place them onto that vacant building. Now at this point, we can do upkeep, and I think let's get rid of both of these tiles, because realistically, we'd love to find a tile like this one that has a red landmark on a corner to fill that spot in to then get a monument. So let's place these to the back of the stack and then draw three tiles. And it looks like, ooh, well, we did get one red, but unfortunately, it's not what we want to see as far as the streets are concerned. We could place this here, but of course, to place a monument down, it has to be this exact size, so we need a road going that way. So I think we're probably not going to be placing that there on our next turn, but we'll just see what we decide to do when we get there. Well, the black player can go. And they've decided to place this tile down like that, so this large district is still not complete, but it's much closer to being complete. After that, they are going to discard both of their tiles and draw three more, so it looks like they're probably digging for something in particular, probably to put on this spot here. Alright, the white player can go, and they've decided to place this tile like that. That's going to complete this district, and as you can see, there are two vacant buildings, there are two blue landmarks, a red landmark, and a statue. Now, at this point, they have decided to settle, and they have to decide what color this statue will be, and they've decided to make it red. With that in mind, they have two red and a non-red, so they can settle this large settler into one of those vacant houses, and then they have two blue and a non-blue, so they can settle this large settler into the other vacant house. Just like that, there are no vacant houses in this district, so that means their Temple of Venus effect will give them two extra points at the end of the game for that district. So as they're filling these districts, they're getting even more points. Now with this monument in mind, the white player probably actually wants to make lots of small districts because they get two victory points for each district that has no empty houses, and this is a pretty large district, so it's likely they're going to try to focus on smaller districts as they continue on throughout the game. 
Well, the white player is going to finish their turn by drawing a tile, which means it's time for us to go. Now, I think we should place this tile in here. That way we get a couple of vacant houses near a red and orange landmark because we can see over here that we have red and then orange for those small settlers. We, of course, have a larger district forming by that, which I think is fine. And utilizing these vacant houses along with these monuments that we've already placed is probably going to be our best bet. Of course, by doing that, we are not extending out our longest straight line of roads, and we do want to consider that as we continue throughout the game. At this point, I think let's discard two tiles again as we continue to search for a red monument or, I suppose, a statue that could go onto a corner piece right there. So let's put these to the back and then draw three more tiles. In this case, it looks like, oh, nice. We actually got two of the thing that we were looking for. And this one is also just a wide open tile. So next turn, we should be able to take one of those two monuments. All right, the black player can now take their turn. And they've decided to place this tile just like that. So that has completed a district that is this shape. And as you can see, that added a statue. Now there's also two of the red landmarks, a green and a blue, and there are three different vacant houses. Now I can tell you that the black player was quite unhappy to see the white player take this large settler over here because they were hoping to place both of these large settlers down. They are going to be placing this red anyway because there are two red landmarks and at least one non-red, so they can place that there. And then they were hoping to make this statue an orange landmark because then they would have an orange, a red, a green, and a blue, and having one of each is what you need to place this large purple settler down. At this point, of course, the black player can't do that, though, because this is the final settler in that row, and you can never remove the final one. As you can see underneath the large settler, that is seven victory points that you get for placing that down. So the white player being able to sneak in and settle up to here on their last turn denied the orange player a significant number of points. Now orange is still able to settle that large red settler over there, and they do have a statue which they haven't used up to this point. And they have decided instead of making that orange, they are going to make it green. This way they have two green and at least one non-green. So they can settle this large settler onto one of those vacant houses. And now there's one more vacant house. And they are simply going to place this small settler down because there is a blue and a non-blue landmark over there. So this is still a really good turn for the black player, getting three of these settlements down. Overall, I got them 4 plus 2 plus 1 or 7 victory points by putting those out. Of course, the black player currently doesn't have any monument tiles, and they probably want to consider getting at least one of those before the game is over. At this point, the black player can perform upkeep, and they appear to be happy with their tiles, and they'll just draw one more. Alright, the white player can go, and they've decided to place this tile like that. That is going to finish their expansion, and they appear to be happy with the tiles they have, so they're just going to draw one more, and that's going to finish their turn. All right, it's time for us to go, and we want to place one of these two tiles over there to get a new monument. Now, between these two, uh, this one has red and green, and this one has the red and the blue, and I think it really doesn't matter for us at this moment that leaves a blue up there, or as this would leave a green down there. Actually, now that I think about it, this is strictly worse, because as you can see, that would put an end to this street, and it's good to have both ends open so we can continue to expand it. So I think we are going to place this like that so that our street continues to go down. That is an extra two points to us. And now we can place a monument down. We've got a red and a green, so that means both of these can go down. And this grand arena is worth four points no matter what, plus an additional four if we have the most settlers in our city, whereas this triumphal arch gives us one victory point per tile in our city's largest populated district. Now, at the moment, we have settled three times, whereas the black player has settled seven times and the white player has settled four. So I don't think it makes sense to go after this grand arena because we are currently not in a good position to have the most settlers once the game is over. One thing we could work towards, however, is a really large populated district, which will get us one point per tile in it. We have a few opportunities to make a gigantic district at this point, and at the moment, the largest district that we have that's already populated has four tiles in it. So this is a minimum of four victory points, and down here, this spot has one, two, three, and could become even bigger, and there's lots of ways, I think, to make a large district, although we do have to complete it and put at least one settler down to get those bonus points. Either way, that is another goal that we have, so we can place that right over there. And now we can get rid of tiles if we want to. This one right here would make it even more possible to get a gigantic district done, although we again have to complete it before the game is over, and we also want to focus on making this road as long as possible. 
Honestly, I think this might be biting off a little more than we could chew at this point. So I think let's discard this to the back of the stack, and then we can draw two new tiles. The last thing that we have to do is draw a new monument so we can grab that out of the bag. And the new one is going to be the Senate House. That is worth two victory points per noble in your city. And nobles are these purple settlers that you can place down that are in the middle of each of these tracks. So far, no one has actually gained any of those, but if somebody does, then this Senate House might become a priority for them. All right, it's now time for the black player to go. After thinking through their options, they want to place this tile just like that, and that's finished their expansion. After that, they're going to keep both of their tiles and draw a new one to finish their turn. All right, it's time for white to go. After considering their tiles, they're going to place this one right over there, and that completes this small district that has a blue and a green landmark in it, and that does not actually match up with any of the requirements for these monuments, but that's just fine because the white player was actually looking to try and settle. This is because every one of their completed districts with no empty houses are worth two extra points, and they want to leverage that here. There is a green landmark and a blue landmark and two vacant houses, so they can place this green small settler there, and then this blue blue small settler, which is worth three victory points to them. They'll place that right over there. There are no vacant houses, and that means this will be worth two extra points because of the Temple of Venus. They've decided to discard one tile, and then they'll draw two more to finish their turn. All right, it's our turn, and we have this new goal of trying to score a bunch of points for one large populated district with our Triumphal Arch. With that in mind, I think we also want to extend our Imperial Gardens out as well. So let's place this tile down here just like that, to start making an even bigger district. And then we can plan to put a road going like that to extend this out that way. So we are also continuing our longest straight road. We could, of course, combine this district with that one over there, but that would end the road. We'll just have to see what our options are as we continue on. We do have two tiles in our hand that could actually be placed like that to extend this out even more if we want to. And both of them would add another vacant house. Currently, this district has two vacant houses, as well as a red landmark, an orange landmark, and a wild statue landmark. Now, we can make this decision later, but I do think this is going to be a good call for us as we try to expand out to a nice big district. So, our expansion is done, and I think we should get rid of one of these two tiles. And considering we are likely to place one of them over here on our next turn, the question is, do we want a red in that district there, or do we want a blue? And I suppose we have a couple of reds and a couple of blues out here already. And maybe putting the blue down would be good to try and then get a second blue to try and get one of these larger settlers down that give even more victory points. So we'll keep this tile and discard that one and then draw two more. And perhaps we draw something that's actually better for over there. Oh, wow. <laughs> this one would stop that road and make this district even bigger. And this one would continue things along and add another landmark color in over there. That is certainly interesting, and we'll figure out what to do on our next turn. All right, the black player can now go. And they've decided to place this tile just like that. This means they've actually completed two districts. This district right here is a one by one with an orange and blue landmark, but there aren't any vacant houses in there to settle. But it appears they are fine with that because they completed that district over there, which is a two by one, and it has a green and red landmark, when that is exactly what they need to build this grand arena. That's going to be worth four points to them at the end of the game, plus four more if they end with the most settlers. And currently they have seven compared to the six of white and the three of us. So there's a bit of a competition between these two, and it appears the black player is going to be pushing even more to try and stay in the lead to get those extra four points at the end of the game. For the upkeep, black is going to keep their tiles and draw one more. Well, the white player can now go. And it looks like they're going to give the black player a run for their money when it comes to having the most settlers. They're going to place that tile there, which completes this region. Although before they move on beyond that, I just realized we actually need a new monument at the end of the black player's turn. So technically we should have seen this first, and this new one is a treasury. That is worth four victory points plus an extra four points if your city has the largest number of populated districts. Now the white player is going to continue on, and they would like to settle a small orange and small blue settler into that new district. They'll do that by putting this orange settler there and that orange settler onto that vacant house. So now they have eight settlers in their city, which is one more than the black player, so they might be starting to sweat a little bit with that grand arena. Either way, the white player is now going to finish out their turn by just drawing one tile, and now we can go down here. So let's place one tile, and I think this is the tile that we want to go with. 
We'll put it right over there so that extends out our longest straight road. It also extends this district out, making it bigger and more lucrative when we complete it for that triumphal arch, and that added a blue landmark into that district. This district also has a red and orange landmark and a statue, so that means this statue could also be a blue, which would let us settle a large settler, and that would be good considering both of our large settlers are currently blue. Now, we also see that we added a statue into this district that could grow out that way, or we could just end it really soon. Uh, the fact that that is a statue makes this very flexible for potentially taking yet another one of these monuments and building it over there. Either way, I think that is going to be our placement, and now we have these two tiles, and once again, I think we're going to get rid of the tile that does not have any roads on it. It doesn't look like that is pushing us towards any of our current plans. So let's discard that and then draw two more. All right, it's now the black player's turn. And they are going to place this tile like that. That completes this district, which has two vacant houses, a statue, and an orange monument. Which means technically they could build this senate house, which is worth two victory points per purple noble they have in their city. But they don't have any purple nobles just yet. And instead, they have decided to settle an orange small settler. And then with this statue, they could settle any non-orange settler of their choice. In this case, they've decided to go for blue, and they'll start by settling this orange one and then this blue one. So that means the next settler in this row is this noble. As you can see, the small noble is worth four victory points, and you need three different landmarks in a district in order to place a noble down into a vacant house. After that, black can do their upkeep, and they are once again happy with their tiles. So they'll just draw one new one, and now it's time for the white player to go. They'll start by expanding. And they're going to place this tile right up there. So that has put a street here, which is going to lead this district over to the right and the other one up to the top. After that, they're going to discard one tile and then draw two more from the supply. All right, we are next to go and we want to continue with our growing district down over here. Now, one thing that jumps out to me is if we put this over here, that is going to close off this part of the district, but leave it open down there. That will add another blue landmark. And what that means is we would have the two blue that we need to place this large settler. And of course, we have this statue and we could potentially make that green. If we do, then we would have green, blue, orange and red, which is one of each of the four. And that would let us place this noble down. And of course, the big noble is worth seven victory points. At the moment, we can see if the black player places this red settler down, then that would stop us from being able to play the noble. And of course, we really want to play that noble to get those seven victory points. So we would like to make this a really big district, of course, to get as many points as we can from the Triumphal Arch. But we don't want to wait too long and then lose access to some great victory points from settling like this. Now, obviously, we're not settling right now, but we could potentially end this on our next turn. If we did that, this district would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven large. And that would make this Triumphal Arch worth seven victory points. Making a district larger than seven would be fun, but of course, grabbing all of those victory points is also a good thing. Now, it's nice that we can close this off on our next turn if we need to. Obviously, we aren't doing that right now, so we'll just see what our options are like once it is once again our turn. Now, I think we should probably just draw one new tile. We could, of course, extend out with this one down here to make that triumphal arch even better if we want to. So these are both decent options, and we can draw one new tile, and it looks like that matches the tile we already have. These are the same tile here, so we will have two options available to us on our next turn. All right, the black player can now go, and they've decided to place this tile just like that. After that, in upkeep, they can discard tiles if they want and they will discard one and then draw two more from this stack that is now getting pretty small. After that, white can go, and they've decided to place this right over there. After that, they're going to discard one tile and draw two to end their turn. After that, we can go, and I am pretty tempted to place one of these two identical tiles down over here. We've got this growing district, but I just realized we have all of these landmarks and only two vacant houses. Of course, the more vacant houses we have, the more we can settle into that district and get more victory points. And I also just realized that looking over here at the black player's city, they are not in a position where they can actually place this large red settler down on their next turn based off of their current layout. Of course, they could place a tile down on their next turn and then maybe take that on the following turn. And by placing this over here, we are making it so that we will have to place two more tiles to actually complete this district. But I really do want to add another uh, vacant house down, and this adds two. So I think we're going to push our luck a bit and place this down like that. 
after that we can do our upkeep and I think we want to keep this if we want to place two corners down we can complete that district in two plays whereas this one would just extend things even further. So I think let's discard this and then draw two more tiles. And uh oh, it looks like we got two diagonals. So right now we are not in a position to have two of those angles to complete that district. And hopefully we'll find one from the draw deck on a future turn. Well, the black player can go. And they've decided to place this tile down just like that. This completes that district. There is an orange, a red, and a blue landmark, as well as two vacant houses. And because of that, they are going to settle the first noble of the game. Remember, these small nobles require three different landmarks in that district, and that is going to get them four points. So they can place this over here because there are those three. And then they will also settle this red going over that halfway point into the white player's side of this row. That is a three-point settler right there. And they can place that into this vacant house because there is a red landmark and at least one non-red. So by placing those two settlers down, they just got seven points for themselves. And of course, they are denying potential points the white player could have by settling in that direction. After that, the black player is going to finish their turn by just drawing one tile from the stack. After that, the white player can go. They're going to place this tile right here, and they are starting to regret making these large districts instead of small ones. That is kind of what they should be focusing on, but they're of course also dealing with the tiles that they are drawing from the stack. That added another statue to this district, which does need at least two more tiles to be closed. When that happens though, they'll be able to settle at least two times. After that, they are just going to draw one tile from the stack. And now it's time for us to once again go. I think we should place this tile down to at least block off one of the parts of this large district. And by doing that, if we find another corner, we could complete this district on our next turn, and it will be worth quite a bit of points at the end of the game. It also has one, two, three, four different vacant houses in it. And remember, each district cannot have more than one of each house type. So that means technically we could put another vacant house here and put all five down if that was actually an option from these rows, but that might be asking a little too much. After placing that down, we can move into upkeep, and I think we're going to ditch both of these tiles and draw three more from the stack, looking for at least one tile that has an angle like that. So we'll put these here, and at this point we are definitely drawing tiles that other players have discarded throughout the game, perhaps even ourselves, and it looks like, ah, nice, we got one tile that will give us the ability to close that district on our next turn. We are done, so black can now go. And they've decided to place this tile just like that. After that, they can do upkeep, and they are discarding both of these tiles to draw three more from the stack. Next up, the white player can go, and they've decided to place this over there as they continue to try and close in this district. After that, they can do their upkeep, and they're actually fine with these two tiles, and then they'll draw one more from the stack. All right, it's our turn, and I think it's time to complete this district and actually get some more settlers out here. We've been so focused on building things out, I just realized we still only have three settlers in our entire city compared to the way more than three that both of our opponents have. Now let's go ahead and place this down over here, and that is going to finish off this large and strangely shaped district. After doing that, we can see that there are one, two, three, four vacant houses in that district. We also have three red landmarks, so certainly more than we needed. We've got two blue as well as one statue right there in the middle. Oh, we can't forget that there is an orange one there as well. Now we know that we want to place the large noble down, which is going to require one of each color, which means this statue will have to act as if it was green. So let's focus out and now settle this large settler. We have the two blue that we need plus at least one non-blue. So we can place that over there. And then we can settle this noble because again, we've got red, orange, blue, and then green from that statue right there. So we can place this noble onto that spot, and we have just gained 11 points by placing those two out. And of course, there are still two other vacant houses that we want to fill now. One of these should certainly be red, considering this red settler right over here is worth three victory points to us at the end of the game, whereas all of the other settlers that are options are just worth one. So we'll place this one over here because obviously we have a red landmark. Actually, we have three red landmarks and at least one non-red. Now the last spot over here can be filled with an orange or green settler because the other three colors are already present in this district. When we look out at our options, we could do red, green, purple or green, and the purple and red are already in that district, so that means our choices are one of these two greens right here. 
I figure we may as well take this one, considering our white opponent has settled more in that row than our black opponent has settled over there. So potentially we can fight in and stop them from getting too far towards our side. Let's place this green settler right over there. And overall, we just got 11 plus 4 or 15 points when we placed these four settlers down. Not a bad turn overall, especially considering our Triumphal Arch is going to be worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 points at the end of the game. And our Imperial Gardens Long Road has now been terminated right over here. So if we want to continue to get even more points for that, we are going to build in that direction. Obviously, taking this one monument has really dictated the shape of our city as we've been expanding out. Well, at this point, it's time for upkeep, and these are our two tiles. This is a pretty good one to have. We could place that on areas like this or that to close things off and potentially add more settlers. This one, though, I don't think is too great for us at this point of the game. Although I suppose that could go over there, and then we would just need two spots to fill it in. But it does have a green, and we only kind of care about green, and we already have a green landmark there. So I think let's ditch this one to the supply and then draw two more tiles. Now, when we do that, you'll notice there are just two tiles left in the supply, which means these are the final two tiles that we'll get for the entire game, because obviously the black player will take one of these and the white player will take the other. So these are going to be our final three tiles for the rest of the game, and it looks like we picked up another one of those tiles that have no roads on them. Well, our turn is done, and now the black player can go. After considering their options, they're going to place this tile right over there. So that district is almost complete, but not quite. After that, they are going to discard one tile and then draw two more from the deck and put those into their hand. So these are their final tiles for the game. So the white player can take their turn and they are going to place this tile down just like that. This is going to complete this overall district. And in that district, there are two statues, two orange landmarks, a green landmark and a red landmark, as well as three different vacant houses. Now they want to settle in this district and they'll start with this orange. There are two orange landmarks and at least one non-orange, so they can place that there. And then after that, they are going to make this statue over here green, so that they have two green landmarks and at least one non-green, so they can place this large green settler down. After that, they are going to settle with this noble, because they'll make this statue blue, so they have blue, green, red, and orange. And that's the one of each that they need to place this right over here. So that district no longer has any vacant houses in it which means they will get two points for it for this Temple of Venus, and they just cleared 13 victory points worth of settlers off of this board. They're feeling pretty good about that, and they can now end their turn by drawing the final tile of the game, and at this point, all players are going to take three more turns because, of course, we have to play all of our tiles out, but we will no longer draw any tiles because there are none left in the stack. Well, we can now go, and once again, these are going to be our final three tiles, so we should probably think ahead about how we actually want to place these down to get the most victory points possible. Now, the first thing I'm curious about is can we actually place this tile so that it gets us points? We could put it somewhere like this, and then I suppose we could do that with our last couple of placements, although that would definitely not close off a district. Now, we could put this somewhere like this, and then do that, but again, we're not going to be able to close off that district, so that's not going to help us out in that particular area. And then up here, I think we're going to have a similar situation. So unfortunately, I think this tile is not going to do anything for us, and that can be our last tile placement of the game, and it simply won't gain us any victory points. Now we have these two, and we can plan ahead, of course. We could put either of these into this slot to complete a district, which gives us a few options. We could also place one up here and another one like that to increase our road by one more chunk to get two more victory points. Although if we do that, we aren't closing in any districts. So I'm not sure if those two extra points would be worth the points we could get by closing off at least one district with this placement right here. I suppose we could also close that district off by placing over there, and I'm sure these are going to be worth more than two victory points for just extending out our road. With this in mind, we can look out to the rows and see that actually, if we place right over here and get a green and a red small settler down, we could place both of these, and that would be worth five victory points to us, and it would stop the white opponent from being able to place this noble and get the four points, if not more, if they were able to place that green at the same time. That's probably going to be our most defensive move, and it also gets us a bunch of points. Of course, there is also this noble over here, which is worth four points, that we would like to keep in mind. 
And in fact, if we placed this like that, we would have three different colors. So we could place that noble as well as the red onto those two houses. If we did that, of course, the white player could place this noble, but us getting our own noble would make this a six point turn overall, which is pretty great. And if we go with this plan and the white player does not take this noble, then on our next turn, we could close this off and actually place that green. So I think this is gonna be our turn. We'll slot that in right over there. And just like I said, let's place this purple noble down because there are three different colored landmarks. We can put it right over there. And then after that, we will place this red right over there because there is a red landmark and at least one of a different color. That was pretty good overall. I think that was six points right there. And I think we have a good plan for our next turn. And then our last turn, I think, is not actually going to do anything for us. Our turn is done, and we don't have any upkeep to do because there are still three monuments out here, and for a good while now, no one's gone after any others. It's possible someone might pick one of these up before the end of the game, but let's just see what happens with the black player now taking their turn. And they're going to place this tile right over there. That completes this district, and it has three vacant houses, and it has a blue, an orange, and a red landmark in it. And with that in mind, they'll place this orange settler. And then they'll place this noble settler because there are three different landmarks in that district. And after that, they will place this red settler because there is a red landmark and a non-red. So they just placed three settlers down, and overall, that got them 10 victory points. The black player's turn is done, so now white can go. And they're going to place this tile just like that, and that is going to finish their turn. Next up, we can go, and we should place this over here, I think, in order to complete that district. By doing that, we have placed a blue landmark, and there's an orange and a green, and two vacant houses. The other option puts these over here, so there are four vacant houses and just two landmarks, and we would have no way to fill those other two houses. So let's place it like this. And now we actually have a tricky situation. We could place a small green, blue, or orange settler into this area, and at the moment we don't have any way to gain access to orange settlers. This one over here is blocked by a red and we cannot place a red. So that means we can effectively place a green and a blue in this area. And we could place this one green, but then we could not place the blue. And over here, we could place this one green. And it looks like no matter what, we're actually only filling up one of these houses. That is going to be this one, I believe. So this is still a three-point turn. But I was really hoping to fill both of those houses. And three points ended up being the best that we could do here. With the fact that we only made three points there in mind, I've actually just seen another option that we can consider. We could place this tile down over here, and that would complete this district with a blue and a green landmark in it, and that is exactly what we need to place this monument. So we would not be gaining these three points, but we'd gain the treasury, and that is worth four victory points, plus four more if our city has the largest number of populated districts. Now, I can tell you right now, we do not have the largest number, but that would be worth four victory points, which is more than three. The big effect, if we go with this instead of that first plan, is by leaving this out here, the white player could potentially place this noble down and gain themselves four points, whereas if we place this green, that denies the white player from being able to place either of these small settlers. So realistically, our choice is gain three points and stop this four points from our opponent, or gain four points and potentially also let the white player gain four points for that settler. Between these two, I think we are going to stick with the first plan. We'll just put this over here and settle onto that spot. So that does stop the white player from settling that lucrative noble. Well, our turn is done. So now the black player can go. And they've decided to place this tile right up there. As you can see, this is a small completed district. It has a blue landmark and a statue, and they've decided to make that statue blue so that they can place the public baths down. This is going to give them two victory points per settler in any one of their districts. And the most settlers they have in any district is three, so that means the public baths will be worth six points to them at the end of the game. All right, black is done, which means the white player can go, and they're gonna place this tile just like that to complete this district. That district has three vacant houses, two of the orange landmarks, one green and one red. And they have decided to place this large orange settler down for four victory points. There are two of the orange landmarks and at least one other one. So they can place that right over here. And then they can't actually settle from this board anymore because there's just one settler on each of these rows. Fortunately for them, they can look over there and take this small green settler for two points and settle them onto this vacant building. They can do that because there is a green landmark and at least one other. 
Now, at this point, they do have a vacant house, which they don't want because of this Temple of Venus monument, but they have no way to fill this house. Uh, realistically, the only color they could put in is red because of that red landmark, but they do not currently have access to any red settlers. So that is going to finish this settlement action and their turn. So now we can go, although technically before the white player even took their turn, there should have been one more monument placed out here. Sorry, I missed that again. I don't think it's possible they could have built this, but that is the Basilica. And it says that when it's built, you immediately discard an available commoner from each of your four columns. Now the commoners are the small settlers over here, so you could use this to gain access to the more lucrative settlers and then settle those down in the future. But at this point in the game, I don't think that monument's going to be helpful for anybody. Now we can actually take our turn, and we are simply going to place this down anywhere. It's not going to complete any districts, so it's not actually going to help us out in any way, and I figure this is as good a place as any. After that, we have no monuments that we can legally place, and no settlers that we can legally put down, so that's finished our final turn of the game. After that, the black player can take their final turn. And the last tile they have is this one, but it looks like they can't actually complete any districts with it. Uh, they could have if they'd placed this here and placed that tile over there, but they decided last turn that taking the public baths would be better. So they'll just put this tile over here and that's finished their final turn. Lastly, the white player can go, and this is their final tile, and it looks like it is a common theme for the three of us in this game. We pulled off our big things on our second to last turn, and on our final turn, we're not actually gaining any benefits for the tile. They're just going to put this one right up here, and that has finished the white player's final turn, and that has also brought the game to an end. With the game over, it's now time for final scoring, and we do have a handy score sheet here, so we can start by scoring all of the victory points each of us gets for each of our smaller settlers. We didn't gain any from this left board, but on the right, we got 10 points plus 6, so that is 16 points for the small settlers. And now we can check black. They have 13 points for this column and 1 point for that one, so that's 14. And then over here, they gained another 13 points. So that's 27 points for their small settlers. And then the white player got 3 points up there, and then 3 plus 6 down here. So that's 12 points total for the small settlers. And now we can score the large settlers. Over here we get nothing, and on the left side we get 7 plus 4 plus 2. So that's 13 points for the large settlers. After that, the black player is going to gain 6 plus 2, or just 8 points, for those large settlers. Next up, the white player got 17 points for these large settlers, plus another 6 for that board, for a total of 23 points for the large settlers. Finally, we can score the victory points we gained for the monuments that we placed down. The Imperial Gardens is worth 2 points per tile in the street that is in our longest continuous straight line. So that is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 long, which will get us 12 victory points. In addition to that 12, we also have the Triumphal Arch, which is going to give us 1 point for each tile in our city's largest populated district. And that is this one down here, that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tiles in it. So we get 12 plus 9, or 21 points, for our monuments. After that, the black player is going to get two victory points per settler in any one of their districts, and they will choose this district here. It has three settlers, so that is six points, and then the Grand Arena gives them four points plus four more if their city has the most settlers. They ended the game with 14 settlers in their city. We ended with less than them at 10, and the white player ended with 13, which is just barely less than 14. So the black player will gain the extra 4 points for the Grand Arena, and that means all told they'll get 14 points for these monuments. Finally, we can score the monuments for the white player, and they have just 1, and the Temple of Venus will give them 2 victory points per populated district in their city that has no empty houses. So they have one district here, another one there, this is a completed district as is that one, and then this one over here is completed, but it does have a vacancy. So they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 districts with no vacancies, and that will get them 10 victory points for that one monument. The final thing we have to do is add up the points, and as you can see, we actually won with a score of 50 compared to 49 of the black players, so we just barely beat them, and the white player was not that far behind at 45 points total. So we have won the game with black in second and white in third. Now I'm sure you're wondering what would have happened if we had tied, and in that case, the tied player with the fewest monuments would break the tie in their favor. Although if we tied with black, we would both have two monuments, and we would end up sharing the victory. So fortunately, we got that extra victory point to win the game for ourselves. 
Well, with the game over, this video is now coming to a close, and I do hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play City Builder Ancient World. If there is any part of the game that you find particularly interesting, or if there were any plays that you think could have been done better, then please comment down below and let me know what you think. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.